Hey guys, Kids Coding here, and I wanted to talk about three main things in this video, and to kind of clarify some of the doubts and some stuff that I introduced. So in this video, we're going to be talking about a couple new things, but they do align with my with another previous video I made called Inheritance. If you haven't seen my Inheritance video, be sure to go check that out. You won't be able to understand the stuff in this video if you haven't watched the Inheritance video. So be sure to go ahead and check that out before coming back here. But we're going to talk about three key things. We're going to talk about is a, we're going to talk about has a, and we're going to talk about the object superclass. So the first thing I want to talk about is in the respective order, I want to talk about is a. Is a is basically a tool used by programmers to decide whether inheritance relationship should happen. I'm going to put that on the board. So in case y'all like to take notes or in case y'all like to see things visually, then I'm going to put it on the board. So is a is a tool used by programmers to decide whether an inheritance relationship should occur. Has a is a tool used by programmers to decide Which attributes should be appropriate for an object? I should say which attributes or methods. And then finally, the object superclass a universal superclass in Java that every class inherits. All right, so by now we kind of know three main definitions. The bottom line is that I want you to know that is a and has a are not keywords in Java. They're just tools used by programmers. And I kind of want to reiterate the definitions one more time. The is a is a tool used by programmers to help them determine whether an inheritance relationship should occur between two classes. The has a is a tool used by programmers to decide which attributes or methods are appropriate for an object. And then finally, the object superclass is just a universal superclass in Java that every class inherits. All right, so let's start with is a. For example, we have a class called FFF, or I'll call it FFR. And this FFR just means fast food restaurants. I just like to keep it short because I don't want to write the whole thing again and again and again. So I just call it FFR. And then I want to have a class inherit this class, but I don't know if it's appropriate to extend this class. So what I can do is I can think of a class I want to inherit and I can see and I can plug it in with is a, and I, I can figure out is it appropriate. So what I can ask myself is, is Burger King a fast food restaurant? And the answer is yes, Burger King is a fast food restaurant. And because Burger King is a fast food restaurant, this inheritance relationship can occur. So that means that Burger King can 
can extend fast food restaurants. Or I'm just going to say at the farm because that's what I had earlier. All right. Keep in mind that um, Java isn't going to restrict you. So like, let's say you say like Pi extends FFR. That's still going to work. Like the compiler won't care. But for us programmers to think about object-oriented programming in the real world, it would make sense to decide whether it's a this. It just helps for the inheritance relationship because it would make sense to show that inheritance relationship. So since Burger King is a fast food restaurant, it would make sense to make Burger King inherit fast food restaurant. So that's really what the is of means. It's just a tool used by programmers to help them know whether an inheritance relationship is possible. And since Burger King is a fast food restaurant, an inheritance relationship between child class Burger King and a parent class fast food restaurants will be a thing. McDonald's is a fast food restaurant. Therefore, we can make McDonald's inherit fast food restaurants because the inheritance relationship occurs. Okay, so second we have has a. And for this, we're gonna have another class and we're gonna call it FFR again. So, FFR. Does FFR have food? Does FFR have a burger? And in this case, a fast food restaurant has a burger. And since a fast food restaurant has a burger, it would make sense to make that an attribute. So we're gonna make, we're gonna practice encapsulation and we're gonna say private string food. A fast food restaurant has food. So that's why it would make sense to say that. A clock does not have, a, a fast food restaurant does not have a clock. So that's why we wouldn't want to make clock an attribute. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. But the has a relationship is really used to show whether or not attributes or methods are necessary for a certain object or a certain instance of the class. So we can say that, what's the best example? Fast food restaurants have a restroom, right? So since a fast food restaurant has a restroom, we can put that down as a method or an attribute, whichever. So hopefully that makes sense on how the has a tool works. And then finally, we have the object super class. So, the biggest thing I want to cover in inheritance is I'm not myself a visual learner, but I know a lot of my viewers are visual learners. And the best way to visually understand inheritance is through hierarchies. And hierarchies are just basically used to show levels. So on the top of your hierarchy, you're always going to have object. And that is your object superclass. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to have your arrows. If you code in like an IDE like BlueJay, it's gonna show you this hierarchical inheritance relationship. And I find it really nice, but IDEs like Eclipse, IntelliJ, they don't show you this hierarchical relationship with inheritance. And that's why I'm not that much of a fan of it. But what I can do is I can make separate classes, right? I can make animal. I can make FFR. I can make vehicle. All these will extend object. Every single class you make in Java will extend object. Even classes that extend these, they will still extend object because this already extends object. So this, so the, if we make a class called car that extends vehicle, If we make car extend vehicle, it's also going to extend object since vehicle extends object and car extends vehicle. And then we can continue here. We got Burger King. And then animal, we have a cow. And then we can then have a type of cow. 
So like a brown cow, a brown cow is a cow or something like that. But yeah, that's really how the object superclass works. Every class you make in Java extends the superclass called object. The object superclass is also interesting because it contains many different methods. ToString returns a string version a string version of something. So let's say we have an integer called x in equal 1, 2, 3, 4. I can call the toString method to make that a string instead of an int. And then finally we have dot equals. In the method, takes in an object O. These are the methods, these are the two primary methods that are located in the object superclass. And they're very useful to know. There's also finalized and other methods in the object superclass, but they're not that important to know. But dot equals object O is used, it return, well really, it returns a boolean to state whether or not if, if two objects are equal. If two objects aren't equal, we return false. If they are equal, the method returns true. And that's why you often see, like in unit two in APCSA, you, if you study APCSA and you work with strings, you probably, like, remember when we compared strings and strings, right? When we made them equal to each other, we have to use dot equals because strings are objects, right? And dot equals is used to show the relationship between two objects and state whether they're equal. So that's why we can use dot equals. But what's interesting about methods in the object superclass is that these is that these classes can override objects methods. So the this 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 and this they override the two they they can they can possibly if they want to override the two string method. The two string method is kind of interesting because if you just simply print out an object or if so uh, let's say you create an instance of a class so we can create vehicle v. We can print V. And what this is going to do, it's going to give you vehicle. Well, it's It's really, what it's really going to do is that if you have a package state, it's going to give you that package, right? Then it's going to give you a dot vehicle, or it's just going to give you vehicle. And then it's going to give you a string version of its address in memory. And that is not useful for a programmer a lot. So, when you call the toString method, so like when you print V, it called the toString method. And when you call the toString method on an object, it's just going to return the name of the class and then its address in memory. But that's not that useful. So what a lot of classes can do is that they can override the toString method because they inherit object. Keep in mind that you can only override a method if it inherits the method that is defined in that class. So since toString is defined in object and vehicle inherits object, vehicle can override toString. And this is mentioned in my over method overriding video. And it's interesting because you can put whatever output you want that returns a string, and that you can and that will help change its and help change the two strings behavior for that instance of the vehicle class. And I really do feel like that is where it gets really useful. You can do the same thing with the dot equals method or any method in the or any method that a class inherits. Since vehicle inherits object, you can override the equals method and, and change the way the equals method behaves. And that's pretty much it. That's isa, hasa, and the object superclass. Keep in mind that isa is a tool used by programmers to determine whether an inheritance relationship should occur. It has a is a tool used by programmers to determine which attributes or methods are appropriate for an object. And the object superclass 
is the universal superclass in Java that every class inherits. Since every class inherits object, every class can override its methods. So like to string and equals can be overridden by every single class you make in Java. And yeah, whoops, I just dropped my marker and I put a stand on the wall. But regardless, that's it with this video. We've talked about three main things and I hope I kind of covered up some doubts on inheritance itself. If you still have any questions, I'm very happy to answer them. Just let me know if you have any questions. Like, I, I don't know if you have a question if you tell me you have one. So be sure to go, don't be afraid, ask questions. I will definitely, definitely answer them as soon as I know that you have a question. And that's it. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give that a like and subscribe to the channel.